How hot it feels is determined primarily by a combination of two factors, temperature and humidity. It's called the heat index. For a long time, scientists didn't pay much attention to it. But when we combined both heat and humidity into our climate analyses, the world suddenly got a lot more dangerous. In the U.S., heat already kills more people than all climate-related events combined. But 60 years from now, the one-two punch of higher temperatures and higher humidity may become so extreme that millions of people will be at risk of overheating. In other words, more people will die. Let's look at a heat index of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. A high heat index leads to heat exhaustion, which if you've never experienced it, is just awful. Muscle cramps, dizziness, and vomiting are just a few of the symptoms. But for the elderly, the sick, the very young, and those working outdoors, it can be deadly. Now let's look at a heat index of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. This is almost never experienced in the US today. But when it got that hot in Chicago during a massive heat wave in 1995, 700 people died. If we don't reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, 60 years from now, nearly 3 billion people could be exposed to that kind of heat or worse during their lifetimes. Now finally, let's look at a heat index of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. In theory, healthy adults resting in the shade, wearing thin clothing, and with an endless supply of water could survive temperatures in excess of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. But if we add enough humidity to the air, in just a matter of hours, the same people would overheat and die. When it gets that hot, our core body temperature rises and our internal organs start to fail. Within the next two generations, we project that as many as 11 million people could experience at least one heat index event past that 165 degree threshold. Now that may sound unbelievable, but it's actually already happened, most recently in southern Iran back in 2015. Luckily, there was enough air conditioning to support the population, but what if the power had failed and people suddenly didn't have AC? In the real world, People don't have an endless supply of water, and they're not in the shade, and they're wearing heavy clothing, and they have pre-existing health conditions, and they're elderly, and they're young. These conditions are gonna cause unprecedented suffering and disruption around the world. Air conditioning will increasingly become a life or death requirement, and it will lead to more global warming, especially if it's powered by fossil fuels. When it becomes that hot outside, it becomes difficult to farm, to build critical infrastructure, Disruptions in that kind of work can lead to other problems like food insecurity, mass migration, and conflict. Fortunately, there are things we can do to avoid the worst. We can dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions by transitioning from fossil fuels to zero carbon energy. There are a lot of proposals out there for how to do this, from investing in renewables, to retrofitting our buildings, to reforming our agricultural practices. None of it'll be easy, and none of it will come without a cost. But if we don't do what we know works right now, our future will be very hot.